Good morning. Uh, today we are going to start with something that all of us know and we have been taught this topic from right from our childhood. Now, this is nouns. All of us are familiar with what is the definition of noun. Noun is the name of a person, place or thing. In uh, scientific English, you will uh, need, of course, a um, uh, less proper noun, which is the name of a person, place or thing. But of course, you would need, you have to use proper names of the proper gases, uh, solutions and also uh, the kinds of burners you use. So, those are the things that ne require knowledge of proper nouns, but that I am sure most of, uh, most of you would find very easy to do. Common nouns are, we say a black table, a black board. We are not going to talk about very specific kind of a black board. Okay. So, uh, therefore, I mean I am, I am say, I will give you a very common example. Uh, I have a pen, but if I say I have a shuffle pen or I have a um, Parker pen. So, that makes it very proper. Okay. So, because yeah, I am using a proper noun, a specific name here. And then abstract are those that cannot be seen, but only felt. For example, heat, for example, uh, frozen, for example, uh, boi uh, of course, we can see boiling, but then heat, cold, freeze, these are the things that we can only feel. Okay, these are abstract. In English, generally we use uh, abstract nouns to express feelings and emotions. Uh, love, hate, anger, excitement, these things cannot be um, touched and felt. Okay. Of course, heat can also uh, cannot be touched, uh, can be touched and felt, but then again um, it has no shape or form. So, this it becomes more abstract. Countable, uncountable, this is something that I am going to focus a lot today uh, on, because um, as scientists, you should know what elements can be counted and what are those words in the English language that are uncountable and therefore, you have to be very clear about the way you write and speak. You, uh, we are also going to do something very briefly, possessive nouns, you know, there is a thing called apostrophe. Um, for example, uh, Mina's notebook. The better way is to say Mina's notebook and not notebook of M Mina. Okay. So, this is something where to use possessive and where not to use possessive that is what you should be familiar with. So, as we have been talking about noun is a name of a person, place or thing. Um, it denotes uh, uh, often when we talk about common nouns and uh, sorry abstract nouns also, then uh, you, it, they can also they suggest things or ideas. The word noun by the way is derived from the Latin word nomen, N-O-M-E-N, which means name. And uh, of course, it goes without saying that Nouns are prevalent, nouns exist not just in uh, our English language, but also in every language. Types of nouns you have, uh, as uh, I am sure all of us have been taught in schools, we have common noun, you have proper noun, you have abstract noun, you have collective and material noun. Okay, material noun is also uh, something very interesting and that you should be familiar with. Now, common nouns are used to refer to general things or places rather than specific examples as I have already given you the example of Parker pen, Sony's camera and we are not using just any camera. Uh, common nouns are not uh, capitalized. So, when you use the word camera, you know, do not have to uh, capitalize C there, but when you say Sony's camera, then you have to capitalize S. So, um, and of course, there is another rule that whenever uh, you begin a sentence 
any word that you begin the sentence with, the, it has to have a capital. So, only in two situations a common noun has to be capitalized. Now, uh, let us talk about proper noun. I live in Chennai, Arjun lost the bet. So, Chennai is name of a city and it has to be in C should be in capital, Arjun lost the bet, A should be capital, India is uh, my country, so I capital and all names of uh, uh, names of all countries should be in capital, capitals, cities, great rivers, the river Nile, the river uh, Jamuna, all these require a capital. Now, um, as we have been talking about proper noun is a name used for an individual person, place or organization, the U N O. So, we are not going to write that in lower caps, U dot N O dot O that is a proper noun in an all caps. Abstract nouns are those that refer to ideas, concepts, emotions and things that you cannot taste, feel, touch, hear, etcetera. That is, a, now let us take honesty is the best policy, right. Now, honesty you cannot touch and feel, you all, you, so, you are, uh, you feel it of course, but you cannot have uh, a specific amount of honesty. So, it is a ta non tangible emotion, love is a non tangible, you cannot count it. So, therefore, these are abstract nouns. So, you cannot see them, taste them, touch them, smell or hear them, okay. they go beyond those uh, sensations. Collective noun is a word that refers to a group. So, it can be either uh, singular or plural, that is a, but is usually used in the singular. Our class graduates next year, a school of fish. So, a school is a group, we do not say schools of fish a herd of sheep. Okay. The audience loved the performance, the audience loved the movie, it has become a, a blockbuster. So, audience is a collective noun and it is always and very often, I mean there are always exceptions, but let us not consider them as of now, perhaps later. We should always play in a team, team again is a collective noun. Material noun, material nouns are names of materials or substances out of which things are made. Uh, cotton dress, cotton sari, silk shirt, okay. uh, Taj Mahal is made in marble. So, marble are all these material noun and uh, we need not consider it as a subset of common noun it is a specific noun. Now, um, look at this slide, identify the noun and the type of the noun. I will read out the sentences for you, this is your exercise. I saw a ship in the distance, did you meet Arun on your way? He loves music, we eat three meals a day, Tarun usually tells jokes, the boys are on their way out she loves to wear silk. Now, I is a pronoun, ship is important here. So, I saw a ship here and ship is a noun. Which ship? I do not know the um, HSS or uh, the royal ship or a ship called Mary Stuart, I mean not, we do not know okay, which ship he is talking about, but just a ship it is a common noun. Did you meet Arun on your way? Arun is a proper noun, name of a person. Um, he loves music, he, we are using he instead of uh, anyone, let us, we can always replace it with any uh, proper noun. So, he is uh, a pronoun, music is a noun here, common noun. Okay. He loves Michael Jackson's music that becomes or he loves Carnatic music that becomes a proper noun. We eat three meals a day, your meals, okay, but we do not say we meal, three meal a day, three meals it has to be in plural. 
okay, your common noun, we are not saying which kind of meals. Okay. Tarun usually tells jokes, so Tarun is your proper noun. The boys are, so the boys are common noun, we are not specifically told which boys. She loves to wear silk, silk is becomes your material noun. Okay. And in Tarun sentence, Tarun usually tells jokes, jokes are also common noun. Let us consider possessive nouns now, I, I have already give, t told you, um, it, it usually takes an apostrophe s, okay, this is a, the symbol apostrophe s okay, and uh, to denote that uh, what belongs to whom. So, um, we add an apostrophe to singular nouns and to irregular plurals that do not uh, end with an s. Now, irregular plurals that do not end in an s. Plural of child is children. When you say children's notebook, children's school, then there is an apostrophe like this. Okay, it uh, plural of child is children, and then children remain plural, and it doesn't become children's. Similarly, we have uh, I can give you more examples. Jack's car, the college's trustees the boys playground etcetera. Now, um, here is another exercise, this is your second exercise, please look at the slide. Tell me whether you should have an apostrophe here or you should be able to change the sentences, I mean I uh, will give you an example. This is um, the playground of children and if you say this is children's playground, obviously the second one sounds more appropriate. I would like you to take a look at these sentences and then make changes wherever necessary using an apostrophe form. Please take a look. She was surprised by the result of yesterday. I realized I had uh, bought the textbook for the first year. He was shocked by the words of his sister. The piano playing of Mark has improved over the years. It is the calendar of the last year. What should you do? Now, uh, let us try to solve these sentences. She was surprised by the result of yesterday. No, yesterday's result that is more accurate and appropriate. I realized I had bought the first year's textbook. He was shocked by his sister's words. Mark's piano playing has improved over the year, the not piano playing of Mark and it is last year's calendar, it is the last year's calendar. So, this is the way that you make possessive um, forms and again uh, I would suggest that you go back to your high school Ren and Martin grammar book and you will find lots of basic explanation for these things. Many a time we find students making very serious errors where possessive forms are concerned. Now, um, I am going to give you this passage and uh, uh, I have also highlighted some reading for uh, some certain expressions and words for you, we will discuss them. However, before we start and I will read out the passage and we will read it, I will also show you the passage. This is not for listening, but this is for reading. So, you please look at the questions first. Before we look at the uh, slide, first look at the questions. The questions are, what were the observations of Doppler ra radar? This is a passage about uh, the planet Mercury. What are the strange facts about Mercury's surface? What is unique about Mercury's core? And then I have, I would like you to consult, open your dictionary, consult your dictionary and 
look up the meanings of the words bizarre zenith resonances. So, please pay attention to these questions, note them down and let us move on to do the reading. Please read the slides, please look at the slides carefully. We will read together. Until 1962, it was thought that Mercury's day was the same length as its year, so as to keep that same face to the sun much as the moon does to the earth. But this was shown to be false in 1965 by Doppler radar observations. It is not known that Mercury rotates three times in two of its years. Mercury is the only body in the solar system known to have an orbital rotational resonance with a ratio other than 1 is to 1, though many have no resonances at all. This fact and the high eccentricity of Mercury's orbit would produce very strange effects for an observer on Mercury's surface. At some longitudes, the observer would see the sun rise and then gradually increase in apparent size as it slowly moves towards the zenith. At that point, the sun would stop, briefly reverse course and stop again before resuming its path towards the horizon and decreasing in apparent size. All the while, the stars would be moving three times faster across the sky. Observers at other points on Mercury's surface would see different but equally bizarre motions. Mercury's interior is dominated by a large iron core whose radius is 1800 to 1900 kilometers. The silicate outer shell analogous to Earth's mantle and crust is only 500 to 600 kilometers thick. At least some of the core is probably molten. Measurements from the messenger spacecraft show uh, Mercury's magnetic field is approximately three times stronger in the northern hemisphere than the southern hemisphere and has led to breakthrough research. Modeling by Haukeo, a UCLA postdoctoral scholar working in the lab of Christopher Russell after considering many factors including how fast Mercury rotates and the chemistry and complex motion of fluids inside the planet show the magnetic field of mercury works differently than it does on earth. We will go back to the questions, what were the observations of Doppler radar and here is your answer. See the answer is a little bit complex here. Um, you have to give a write it in your own words that till 1962 it was thought that Mercury's day look at the way apostrophe is used here. We are not saying day of Mercury, but Mercury's day was the same length as its year so as to keep that same face to the sun much as the moon does to the earth. But then uh, Doppler radar observ observations showed this uh, belief to be false. So, that is the answer. What are the strange facts about Mercury's surface? That is your next question. Okay. And then you have to talk about the high eccentricity of Mercury's orbit that produces very strange effects for an observer on Mercury's surface. Okay. So, answer is given somewhere in the preceding lines. What is unique about Mercury's course? This is answer is given here. Mercury's interior is dominated by a large iron core whose radius is uh, so much the silicate outer sh shell is only 500 to this at least some of the core is probably molten. Okay. So, the answer lies somewhere here and you have to give answer in your own language in your own words. See you are doing language, so you should be able to not change the facts, but try to bring some variety to the sentence structure. Of course, you cannot do much about the vocabulary, the jargon, the scientific jargon um, and the facts, but you can always do something about the, you do not have to ex use the exact language to express yourself which is given in the text. Uh, meanings of the following, I hope 
that you are looking and also try to understand some uh, meanings from the context also in what context these words occur. So, this is your exercise, your homework. We will move on to another topic now, which is now countable nouns. We have been talking about countable, uncountable nouns. So, countable nouns um, are for things that we can uh, count using numbers, um, two cameras, three computers, six chairs, we can count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and uh, infinite. Um, countable nouns have a singular and a plural form. So, one table, two tables. The singular form can be, uh, can use the determiner a or n. So, uh, I have a pen and I have an umbrella. So, this is the way you use a n. If you want to ask about the quantity of a countable noun, you ask how many and not how much and they, that is combined with the plural countable noun. Uncountable nouns on the other hand are for things that we cannot count with numbers. Okay. So, uh, it is a little bit complicated and uh, we uh, and it is not to be confused with abstract noun, okay. but there are several things that cannot be that do not use the countable form of, at all. So, they remain uncountable nouns, they may be the names of uh, abstract ideas or qualities or for physical objects that are too small or too amorphous to be counted. Now, let us say water, hmm? let us say powder or gas. So, these things cannot be really counted, at the same time they are not abstract nouns also, they are not feelings, but at the same time you cannot say liquids uh, and uh, you can say liquids, but you cannot count them, you cannot say how many liquids, how many gases, you can give some quantity, but you cannot give the number here, quantity. so this therefore they remain uncountable. Uncountable nouns are used with a singular verb, they usually do not have plural form. I uh, will give you this list, look at this list of words and uh, these are the words that they rem the, that remain the way they are, no matter how much you have of these. So, jewelry, poetry, it never becomes jewelries and poetries, accommodation uh, yet another very common word uh, that is uh, very often mistaken as com accommodations in plural, there is no such thing, it remains accommodation, one or two. Cam camping is camping, clothing, clothing, equipment, violence, they do not have plural form, evidence, news, furniture, music, health, they are all uncountable nouns, they do not take any uh, plural forms to them. We continue, look at the slide, pain, pleasure, snow, rain, noise, success, shopping, sightseeing, we do not say, we went for several sightseeings in London, we went for shoppings in America, we do not talk like that. So, shopping and sightseeing, no matter how much you do that. Information and education, so these are also not countable nouns. Please make a note of this list. Now, here is an exercise, take a look and I would like you to identify the fly following for, uh, nouns as countable or uncountable nouns. So, flower, flower can be counted, so we have flowers, we also say bouquet of flowers, but that is a collective noun, that is a different matter. Magazines, yes magazine, it remains and it is a countable, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4. T, no, we cannot count it, it is an uncountable, uncountable noun. Milk, no, we cannot count milk. Lemon, lemon can be counted, we can say lemons, we can count eggs, but we cannot count butter, butter is an uncountable noun. Quantity, yes, quantity of tea, milk, uh, butter possible, but not, we cannot make plurals of them. Now, um, here is a text, sample text, I would like you to take a look at this sample text and we are looking at the countable, now uncountable 
nouns here. Please read the text along with me. And some of the words are hi um, highlighted for your own understanding that there are certain words that cannot be used in plural, they are uncountable. So, archaeological evidence suggests that people have been using copper, copper is a metal, it does not become coppers for at least uh, 11,000 years, relatively easy to mine and re uh, refine. People discovered methods for extracting copper from its ores at least 7,000 years ago. The Roman Empire obtained most of its copper from the island of Cyprus, which is where copper's name um, originated. Today, copper is primarily obtained from the ores cuprite, tenorite, malachite, chalcosite, covellite and bornite. Large deposits, now one deposits, several deposits, so countable, uncountable of copper ore are located in the United States, Chile, Zambia, Zaire, Peru and Canada. Used in large amounts by the electrical industry in the form of wire, copper is second only to silver in electrical um, conductance uh, since it res resists corrosion from the air. So, we do not say airs, it is air. Moisture and sea water, copper has been widely used in coins. Although once made nearly entirely from copper, American pennies are now made from zinc. One penny, several pennies are now made from zinc that has been coated with copper. Copper is also used to make water pipes and jewelry as well as other items. People first learned about 5000 years ago that copper can be strengthened if it is mixed with other metals. The two most familiar alloys, so one alloy and many alloys of copper are bronze and brass. The Romans, so they are a people, they are a na uh, people from a particular nation, so they can be used in a plural. The Indians, the Romans, the Afghans were the first to make extensive use of brass, using it to make such things as coins, cattle and ornamental objects. So, all these are common nouns, they can be and which can be used in uh, as uh, uh, plurals. Today, brass is also used in some musical instruments, screws and other hardware that must resist corrosion. We have to look at these uh, words highlighted, understand which can be used in plural and which cannot. All right. Now, here is an exercise, look at it. My question is or the, what you are supposed to do is that whatever words are highlighted here, you have to tell me whether they can be, they can be used in plural or not. So, it is making something glittering and beautiful, it is creating, look at the use of possessive noun here, it is creating a sparkling necklace or a pair of earrings. It is designing and manufacturing jewellery to your heart's content while making profits at the same time. Sometimes jewellery entrepreneurs try to go too big, too fast, says Ann Barber, director of membership benefits at the National Craft Association, a professional trade association in Rochester, New York for the arts and crafts industry. The world of jewellery design is rife with options. In terms of what is hot, be aware of the fashion trends in your area. Edelstein notes that upcoming jewellery trends include a return to yellow gold, a rollback from the all white gold and diamond phenomenon and the addition of lots of colour. Beads, stiletto earrings and layered necklaces are also becoming popular. So, whatever I have highlighted, please tell me whether they can be uh, turned into singular plural form or not. Take a moment and your answer is, yeah, we, so I had highlighted beautiful, it remains beautiful, it is an abstract noun, it is an adjective of course, but beauty is an abstract noun. So, beautiful adjective and it cannot be beautiful, so we let it be. Necklace, one necklace, several necklaces, so necklaces, jewellery remains jewellery, not jewelleries, design, one design, several designs, yes, gold, golds, diamond, diamonds, gold, gold. So, yes, there are certain words, the metals that can be 
turned into plural forms. Before I end, again we are going to do uh, some idioms and uh, expressions that may add some variety to your language and keeping in with uh, today's topic, all are related to the word gold. So, I am giving you a list of idioms and uh, you may use your dictionary online or actually physical dictionary um, and tell me what, uh, what do these words mean. Try to en enhance your own vocabulary. So, uh, first word, first expression a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Second word, gold digger. Next, going for the gold, as good as gold. Next one, as good as gold. Next one, strike gold. And the last one, worth someone's weight in gold, W E I G H T. So, I will repeat a pot of gold, gold digger, uh, going for the gold, as good as gold, strike gold and worth someone's weight in gold. Use your dictionaries, try to understand the meaning of these idioms and expressions. Thank you very much.